Welcome to Money Mondays with Melissa, where we talk about financial empowerment while exploring financial assistance available through local, state, and federal governments each month with a diverse group of subject matter experts. Chicago, are you ready to get financially empowered? Well, we've got just what you need. Without further ado, give it up for your Chicago City Treasurer, Melissa Conyers Irvin. Hello and welcome to our Money Mondays with Melissa. Before we dive into today's insightful session, there are a couple of important points to go over. Firstly, we're excited to inform you that today's session is being recorded and will be available for viewing on both our Facebook and YouTube channels within the next 24 hours. If you encounter any technical difficulties during the live event, please don't hesitate to use the chat feature to inform us and we'll do our best to assist you promptly. Additionally, we invite you to actively engage with us through the chat. Feel free to send in any questions or comments you have during the presentation. Now it's time to introduce our esteemed speaker, Dr. Phyllis Cavallone Jurek, Director Executive at Ladder Up, leads a Chicago-based non-for-profit that provides free financial resources to low-income residents across Illinois. Their services include tax assistance, financial education, and supporting for college financial aid. Last year alone, LatterUp assisted over 27,000 people, returning $45.5 million to the community. Phyllis's commitment to education and community empowerment drives her work at LatterUp, where she ensures hardworking individuals have the tools to build a better future. Phyllis, I now turn over to you. Thank you. Thank you so much. And I'm so happy to be here, everyone. I'm excited to tell you a lot about what we do at Ladder Up. And as soon as you're ready, we will go through our services. So uh, Ladder Up is a Chicago-based financial nonprofit organization. And our mission is to provide hardworking people with the financial resources and opportunities they need to move up the economic ladder. We do this in a variety of ways uh, through our tax assistance program, which I'll detail a little bit later. Um, but we file taxes and we help secure those wonderful tax refunds. We get the most that you, we like to say we get the most credits we can uh, for you. We also have legal counsel, our pro bono legal services help resolve tax issues and controversies. And then we have our financial capabilities and empowerment program. Uh, it's twofold. It's financial education, coaching, and our college financial aid and assistance track. We call it our college success track. So without further ado, we'll dive into some of our work. Um, our overall impact and history, so proud of this. We are rounding the corner to 30 years doing what we do. We were founded in 1994, and in that time, more than 35,000 volunteers have helped us generate a combined total economic impact of 1.4 billion. So excited about that. We have served over 775 clients and prepared over 635 tax returns, and just with t tax refunds alone, 1.4 02 billion in tax refunds. So happy about that. And student loans, our total is three, 375 million in financial aid. Very proud of those numbers. Next slide, please. And I'll tell you a little bit about our, our tax assistance program. It is a VITA program. And what is a VITA program? Well, it stands for a Volunteer Income Tax Assistance Program. And it is an IRS initiative. And it's been around since 1969 and we operate one of those and we're really proud and what it means is um, the bulk of who you might see when you come out to see us are volunteers there are volunteers that have come out from the financial sector perhaps uh, maybe they're college students and they're studying finance or accounting they come out they get trained everybody is certified we go through a rigorous uh, certification everybody who sees you goes through a rigorous certification uh, process. Um, it's a three-step process. The person who greets you is the intake uh, case review person. Then we have, you'll go on to see the tax person who does the data entry. And then finally, the last person, we call them the quality review. They check everything and recheck. 
and print everything out and they walk through uh, your total refund at that program. We provide uh, in this type of program free tax preparation to low income individuals and families with earned income and tax credit eligibility. Our threshold is up to 64,000 for our in person service and up to 73 for uh, our program that we have that is digital that is uh, uh, VITA inspired uh, for those who can't come out to see us in the Chicagoland area. Uh, we also help people with disabilities, uh, limited English proficiency, and the elderly manage their taxes as well. So we are proud to say we are one of the largest VITA programs in the country. And just last year, I'm gonna give you some of our proud numbers, we impacted over 21,100 people. We had an average refund of $1,428. We completed over 13,500 returns. We are on track and I hope to beat that number this year. And we had 750 certified volunteers completing 27,000 volunteer hours. That gave us uh, over $19.3 million in tax refunds. And I pulled some stats for today just to kind of give you where we are. We're already at 8,500 tax returns with a little bit uh, of time left. 12,000 individuals have been impacted. We've already secured $11.8 million in refunds with just over 910 volunteers. So very proud of of our stats this year. Here are our locations. Um, we like to say our 13 in-person locations, we hope are, are conveniently located to either where you work or live. You could see we are in a lot of neighborhoods. We have partnerships with libraries and community colleges throughout the Chicagoland area and some schools. Um, you know, we they differ on their hours and when they're open, Almost every one of these are open on Saturday, uh, and then they have varying hours depending um, on for during the week. So you could check our website at goladderup.org for location details, hours of operation, etc. So um, we are happy to provide the locations for our residents of the Chicagoland area. Um, our ITIN program. It falls within our tax and our legal services. It is something that is very unique to Ladder Up. And what we are is we are a certified acceptance agent. Uh, we have helped over 400 taxpayers uh, in recent years apply and renew their individual taxpayer identification number, otherwise known as an ITIN, to help them meet tax filing requirements and secure, secure important tax credits. So people without a social security number, they need this ITIN number in order to file their taxes and meet their obligations. And being a CAA, a certified acceptance agent, allows our staff to review your important documents like your ID, and, et cetera, and certify that we've seen them and they meet the, the qualifications of the, the file and we can hand them back to you. You do not need to mail them. It's very scary to mail things like your personal ID uh, and your birth certificate and things of that nature. Um, but we can certify that we've seen them, hand them back to you, do the mailing, send them along with your tax return um, and apply uh, and also um, complete renewals if need one. Um, great question that popped up. Uh, do we need an appointment for this program? Yes, it, um, the renewals take about 30 minutes uh, and to make a full application, it takes about 60 minutes. So it's uh, very important that you write us at uh, info, dot, uh, info at goladderup.org, excuse me, put ITIN, say you, you're curious and you would like to have an appointment made, we will set that appointment up for you. Um, and do these. We do a lot of these over the summer. We um, we have a lot of dedicated staff to to take care of these as well. So, um, and then our tax clinic. Um, this is also very unique. Our tax clinic program serves uh, lots of people throughout the Chicagoland area and even um, different parts of Illinois. 
uh, and Northwest uh, Indiana, actually. Um, our outreach is, is quite extensive. We help a lot of people with different things like collections. The clinic assists taxpayers who owes money um, and sets up hardship uh, 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 payment plans and negotiation uh, for an IRS offer or compromise or settlement of debt. So in other words, if you get receive a letter that's kind of scary that says you owe a certain amount, we can help negotiate that down to something that's a lot more reasonable and uh, create a payment plan over time. We also help with audits and tax court. Um, it assists taxpayers responding to audits or disputing audit uh, results in the U.S. tax court by providing credits, deductions, income, de dependent disallowed the, um, regarding de uh, dependents that were disallowed on the return. We help navigate those uh, challenges that uh, some of our tax um, clients receive. We help navigate identity theft issues as well. We've seen an uptick in the last few years since COVID on those, um, and we we help um, them troubleshoot that and innocent spouse relief as well. On the college su success track under our financial capabilities and empowerment program, this is great. This is. Uh, near and dear to me, we help um, provide a lot of workshops for schools and partner organizations. If you work with a partner organization, we call those uh, college pipeline uh, programs uh, or even a community org, a nonprofit that might like to hear us um, talk about these issues or, or these topics. We help provide many, many presentations, College Finance 101, about how to navigate and take care of your finances while you're going to school, how to navigate financial aid, including the FAFSA or the Alternative App, um, financial aid application completion, you actually need help completing the FAFSA, and understanding student loan workshop, how to right size your loan, what kinds of loans you should be taking out so you can graduate with the least amount of debt possible, understanding award letters. This year we had a delay in the FAFSA, so award letters have yet to come out. Um, provisional or uh, estimated ones have only come out. These new award letters for the upcoming year are coming out and we are, have been really uh, helping a lot of people understand and navigate them. And then understanding the I-10 application, which we just spoke about. Um, so what are the requirements for filing late or past the IRS deadline? Um, a question just came up. That's a really good question. So we can help you um, also if you write us at, at info at goladderup.org, or you can come even to one of our sites and we have the form for you to fill out. We can help explain it to you. Uh, there is a, a, you know, just to take a second to talk about that. Um, you will have to, if you feel you have uh, an obligation to pay, you would have to estimate what your tax obligation would be in that nature. They do expect you to make a, a, a pretty good estimate in the paying of it, but the actual filing can be delayed. Um, we can help navigate that. If you do not and uh, you just need to file the form, we can help you do that as well. And who knows, maybe if you come to one of our physical sites and we chat a minute, um, maybe uh, if, if you felt you weren't ready, you actually are ready and we can help you um, do that as well. So, um, but but yes, we, we can help you with that as well. And, um, our financial empowerment track for adults, understanding tax basics, onboarding paperwork. We go over things like the W-2, the W-4, the W-9. Are you an employee or are you an independent contractor? What's the difference? What do I do if I'm a, if I'm a gig worker? Um, lots of people who, uh, especially since COVID, that space has really grown and they ask a lot of great questions about how to reduce their uh, tax liability with the expenses for their business. What's allowable? What can they do? How do they track it? We um, go through a lot of that. Um, we also have a great workshop on budgeting, um, the different kind of budgeting techniques, how to meet a goal, things of that nature, credit scores, what's a good credit score, what is something to think about as far as um, 
helping increase your credit score, how it's comprised, tax tips for self-employment. So we really zero in uh, in this workshop for, for direct help for those that are managing small businesses um, and then understanding the ITIN application. I had a question come up about what are some of the common mistakes you see people with their taxes? Uh, that they're, um, they sometimes our clients do come in and the beginning of tax season when it opens, they, they're so ready to get it over with and done with. Sometimes they do not have all of their papers that they need. Maybe they've had a shift in jobs and they only have one W-2 and they don't have the second one or they don't have their unemployment, something of that nature. Uh, they come to us and they really are eager to file uh, and we have to send them back to go get that extra paper because um, otherwise they're just going to have to do an amendment later. So we want to send in, we want them to submit an accurate, uh, you know, filing. So um, take a minute, open up all those papers you get in the mail. I know sometimes it says important tax document and close, open them up, look at it. If you own a home, uh, bring, uh, make sure you have your pin, your tax, uh, tax, your property tax, if you've worked at a couple places, make sure you've had that. If you're working off an app because you um, are doing some kind of gig work, uh, go in the app to see if you could pull the 1099. Sometimes it's an NEC, sometimes it's a 1099K. Look in there, look to see if there's fees associated with you working with it. Uh, for Uber and Lyft drivers and uh, other uh workers in that space, quite often there are fees. Look for them. Those fees could be deductible. Lots that we see are, um, and that's a good thing for you. Um, and then I have a question. How do you make yourself aware of what forms need to be filled out, a 1099 versus a W-9, et cetera? So yes, that, that um, explaining people if they are an employee, they'd be filling out a W-4. If they are a contractor, uh, they would be filling out the, the W-9. Here's a good rule of thumb. If you are unsure if you should be one or the other, despite um, maybe what's going on in your space, ask yourself if what I can do matters what time and where. Do I have to provide all my materials do I set my own hours? Uh, I think about it. Some, sometimes we see those advertisements of setting your own hours, be your own boss. If that's truly the case for you, if you are um, doing what you do and you can set your own hours and you do things and you could even do it maybe even if you wanted to in your fuzzy slippers, that means you probably are an independent contractor. If you are a, an employee, you have to go in at certain times, Make, they give you the equipment typically. They, if they do reimbursement of maybe mileage, et cetera, uh, it's straight from the employee employer side. And uh, there's forms that you fill out and there's a process. Um, so um, we really, really love giving that, that workshop because there are a lot of misunderstandings um, and, and some people don't know. And or some people don't realize they should be tracking their mileage. Uh, they should be uh, thinking about their phone usage. What percent of their personal phone is used for business? That's a, that, that could be a legitimate expense. Maybe their internet um, if they have to use it for their business. Um, if they have to wear a uniform, even if it's like uh, it, sometimes you have to wear all black um, you know, clothing or a certain colors. It, for your uh, work, um, if that is associated with what you do and your delivery and how, how you go about, then those kinds of things could be um, valid deductions. If you're unsure, when you go to your tax preparer, whether it's us or somebody you really trust, bring all those receipts, bring your notes, let them kind of walk through with you, listen to you, have that conversation and um, decide, I would rather see somebody bring too many things than not enough and miss a valuable, um, you know, credit uh, or a deduction, de depending. So I, I'd like to hear everything that they can uh, bring. So um, go through all your forms, go through all the things that you've been getting um, since Jan the end of January. And um, if you've been an independent contractor, really take a step back and think about what 
you needed to do in, in order to provide your service and, and work. So, um, go to the next slide. A little second to, to kind of do a shout out to what we do. Um, we won several awards. Uh, we're very proud of those. An IRS Stakeholder Award in 22. We won another one from IRS called the Frank Nolden. It's not a cause. It's a cause, not a program award for 23. That one was uh, just really meaningful to us. And then we were one of the uh, nonprofit winners in the Chicago Innovation Neighborhood Award program in 22 as well. And uh, that meant, meant an awful lot because that one was about our impact in the communities and the neighborhoods in, in which we have our tax sites. Um, and it's nice to know that um, that we really um, made a difference, made an impact. Um, does I looking at a question, does ladder up assist with document preparation for tax season? If I'm interpreting that question correctly, does that, if you mean like, do I have the right paperwork to file when you come in to us when tax season opens, the first person who sees you helps get you organized and sorts it through. And there's an intake form and we review it with you. And we take um, about 15 minutes to do that with you to make sure everything is, is, is put together for you to actually file. If at that time it's um, noted that you're missing something, we we tell you that and in, um, we try to make a plan. Sometimes somebody's just missing one, one document, not a big deal. They could come back um, maybe even that day or the next day. Um, other times they might have to chase something down with the previous employer. Um, when you do come see us, uh, I'd like to make a, make a note because um, I, I want to make sure you, you know this. We're very, very diligent and we want to protect everybody's um, identity. So in, in that, in part of our program, we need to make sure you have your ID. You have to bring your ID and your social security or, um, or I-10 card with you and for anybody that would be part of your filing. So if you have dependent children, we would need their social security numbers um, as, as well. So, uh, make sure you have that. So we, we, uh, are, um, you know, we make sure we use your minutes wisely when you come see us, because we know coming out, we want to make sure we file, um, if you're ready. And then, um, a little on to the next one. I think that is just our information on how to get a hold of us. So we have our phone number, we have our general email address. I'm one of the people who look at that. So it doesn't matter what the topic is. I can help sort the question and get it to the specialist. So at info, goladderup.org and our website, um, goladderup.org. Um, oh, great question that just came up. What are things par parents can do to prepare for FAFSA for their young adult? Okay, so if you have a college age student um, right now or just about to, the, the first thing you need to do, um, it, it kind of varies depending on if they're a, a, a junior, a senior or already, maybe um, out of high school. But let's say you've already narrowed down the uh, college or post-secondary program and you're ready to apply to the FAFSA or the alternative app. You need to get an FSA ID and that turnaround time is about three days. So even if you're saying, oh, this weekend we're going to apply for the FAFSA, you got to make sure you've got your username and ID, uh, your, your username and password, I'm sorry, uh, all lined up and uh, squared away two or three days prior to the day that you think you, you would have the time to fill out the FAFSA. So um, you uh, can, can go on um, to uh, uh, the I'm blanking, I'm sorry, on a minute, but you get, you get your, uh, your FSA ID uh, for you. If the child is a dependent for the parent who would also be a contributor to the form. Um, good news, the FAFSA form is much shorter this year. It has gone from 108 questions to about 30 or 40, uh, which is really, really wonderful news. It, it has had a few hiccups in its launch in January. A lot of them have been smoothed out. Um, 
They had made it shorter because they knew it was long and they were trying to be responsive to how lengthy it was. They're also unlocking more aid to more people, which is also wonderful. Um, so at, at this time we're hearing and I'm experiencing about 20 to 30 minutes to fill out the whole form. If you fill it out now, the turnaround time is uh, not bad. Um, right now they're starting to send it all to colleges and universities to create award letters, which should be received sometime in late April or early May. Um, so, and then I see is a student loan payment a write-off for parents or students? It's a good question. And the answer is a little bit, um, it kind of depends on who is creating the student loan. In most cases, the, um, the, the student loans are being taken out as, as part of what the student is, is receiving as part of their whole financial aid package. And during the time that they're in school, the, the interest payments are deferred. Now, if they're out of school, I know I have a couple uh, of my own adult children that are now paying back on their loans. If you're paying back on your loans and it's in your name as the student who just graduated, yes, that is um, a, a credit. We enter that. Um, if a parent took out a personal loan or parent plus loan, et cetera, depending on who took out um, a different type of loan, so not a subsidized or an unsubsidized loan, but something the parent did um, personally for them to help the child, then the parent um, who might have this loan, uh, it would be um, for them to bring in. So that would be on the parent side, but most typically are on the student side. And it's typically if they take out the, the traditional loans, it's about six months after they graduate. Um, yes, they would receive a tax form. They should bring it. It does have an impact um, on their liability. It's a good thing to bring. So great question there. I'll pause to see if um, we've got some other kinds of questions that I can. Yeah, so we're gonna revisit our service slide and offer some more um, specifics like, um, here we go. So if we can go back to that first slide. Here we go, here we go. So. Currently, it's tax season. So if you come out to one of our 13 in-person locations and you like to get your taxes done, um, remember, um, just a, a little note on this. Remember, we need to have all your forms. We need to have your ID, your Social Security card, or your ITIN, um, all your forms. If you only worked at one job um, and it's just you, your single filer, and that's it, and you rent uh, or live with somebody, great, you would only have one form. If you are married filing jointly, if you are married filing jointly, both you and the spouse need to be present with IDs, social security or ITINs, and each have your respective forms. If you are married filing jointly and have um, dependents, a couple children, uh, you would both, uh, the parents would come in together they could bring the social security cards for the children. They do not need to bring the children. They're welcome if, if you'd like to, if it's easier for you. Um, but the, but the spouses um, need to be together. If you are married and you are no longer together for um, longer than six months, uh, you can come in and uh, you can file as married filing separately. Um, it always helps if, um, the two can exchange and be comfortable with each other knowing this and because it, we can then um, e-file it and it'll go a little more quickly, qu more quickly. But never fear, if, if you do not know that and you would like to still file and you're um, long time separated from your, your spouse, we could still file for you and take care of that. Um, if you own your house, um, bring your property tax, um, and go back to uh, if you're head of household, it, you have a couple dependents, maybe they're children or um, a, a sibling that you're taking care of or a parent that you're taking care of, um, you would bring their social security 
card as well. Um, and we can navigate that. Um, if you are, if you run a business, say you're uh, doing something like Uber or some other kind of independent contract work, uh, bring your expenses with you. Um, if you've used your phone, bring your cell phone bill, know your cell phone bill. If that could be part of an expense, we could walk through that with you. Your internet uh, bill, if you have to get on your computer and use uh, internet. Um, try to think of lots of things. Um, if you're an Uber driver, Lyft driver, do you offer snacks to the people you give rides to? Uh, that could be a write-off. Know your mileage, look up your mileage. And if you are doing that and you're listening right now and you're like, ah, oh, I, I kind of know my mileage, take a, you know, think about it, take some time and go through what you can. Uh, we will work with you to try to come up with a, a reasonable estimate. And then maybe um, from this moment forward, hearing from Dr. Phyllis here, you can keep a little notebook. Uh, I just try to have a notebook in my car for things running around. Maybe um, that works for you and you can keep your mileage and you log it there um, or you turn on the, if, is there an app that tracks your mileage for the work that you do? A lot of things do that. Um, or if you are um, kind of somebody who uses your phone for a lot of things and that's how you operate, then lean on your phone and go into the notes section and put things listed there that you, that you do. Um, we, mileage usually is your friend. It really, um, you know, helps you with a lot, especially if you're running around in, in your uh, car a lot. Um, trying to think of other things for you. Uh, if you have children, if uh, if they're younger than in kindergarten, uh, care expenses for you to work, um, what daycare, um, if they are in school, um, certain education expenses can, we can enter. So bring those, um, whatever they can be. Again, you, uh, your tax preparer, whether it's us or somebody else you trust, um, can walk through and look at it with you and ask some good questions and they can decide what can be used or not. Um, I, I urge you to really, really take a minute to think about things um, and, and come with. Sometimes they're very, very easy we see with clients and it's very simple. It's literally one piece of paper. And that's fine. And other times um, there are a lot of things involved be, because you've got a lot of things going on and we'll work with you and we'll sit with you. And that first step of three, when we work with the clients, uh, we sit there and we go through things and we ask a lot of questions to make sure we have everything um, for you so that you're, we prepare your, your, your tax taxes accurately and we uh, apply as many credits that we see that you could be possibly eligible for. We want to maximize our time together and maximize um, all the benefits that you might be eligible for. And we, we go through that pretty thoroughly. Um, so I'll pause again. I know it's tax season, so a lot of people have a lot of questions on that. And there's also, at the same time, because of the delay of the launch of FAFSA, there's a lot of financial aid energy as well. Um, and it all coincided in the same period of time for all of us here. Um, so if you have other questions, I can do my best. Well, um, going back maybe really quickly, if you don't mind, to my last line, because I'm going to do one more overall shout out to how to find us and find more information if you need any help. We are Ladder Up. We are a financial nonprofit, and we hope to see you this tax season. If not, if you um, need us for financial aid support or uh, another kind of workshop for financial capabilities in any kind of way, or even if you have a legal question regarding taxes, we would be more than happy to help. And um, you could reach us by this phone number, 312-409-1555. Uh, Email us at info at goladderup.org. And uh, our website, we continually try to update with great articles, 
Our website also has our physical locations, information, even if you want to use our digital services. So if you can't physically come out to see us for tax season, maybe if you or somebody you know is good with a computer, you can upload things and we can help you in that way. Uh, but regardless, however we can help you, we would be so happy to do so. So think of us and we Hope we provided some guidance today and or um, meet you out in the future if you haven't come out and, and had your taxes completed. We hope to see you. It was a real pleasure to be here today. And I want to thank uh, everyone for your time. And uh, I wish you a wonderful day. Thank you for tuning in to Money Mondays with Melissa. We hope you enjoyed today's session and found value in the topic of discussion. Follow Chicago City Treasurer on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn to stay on top of all upcoming events. Remember, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to the Chicago Treasurer's Office at 312-744-3356 or visit www.chicagocitytreasurer.com. We'll see you next time for Money Mondays with Melissa.